Gracie Jiu Jitsu, the Gracie diet. And today it's amazing. I have Horian Gracie here. His father, who's actually right here, is the man who created Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And the son here, Horian, brought Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to the United States, was the co creator of the UFC in 1993, which is now everywhere you go, you've got mixed martial arts, and it really comes back to his family. So, he just nice enough to come by the house, and I, I wanted to just share with you some very important things, not just about diet, but about philosophy on life, overcoming stress, worry, how to discipline yourself, how to create a daily routine, you know, really how to transform your life. So thank you for coming. My pleasure. Thank you very much. He's a tenth, uh, ninth, degree ninth degree red belt. This belt right here <clears throat> is the highest belt you can get. His father is a tenth degree. There's only, only the founders of jiu-jitsu, the brothers here, uh, and so there's only a few people that have the, the red belt ninth degree. That's correct. Yeah. It's a handful of people around yeah. the world. And then you have, and your sons, uh, Henner is, he's a black, he's a black belt, belt yes, yes. Because to be a, become a red belt. You have to be at least 50, so they have a ways to go. Yeah, because the coral belt comes in, <clears throat> in between. Right? That is correct. Yeah. The black belt goes up to six degrees. Yeah. And then seventh and eighth are coral, coral belts. belts. And then ninth is red. Is red. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you gotta be, they, they've been doing jujitsu. Here's a cool picture here. He was, had his gi on before he was even old enough to remember one or two. You probably don't remember that I don't picture. remember, no. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And I got the jujitsu flag yeah. here. Very cool. Brazilian flag. Yeah, the nice. US one on the highest there. So this is where I do Brazilian jujitsu. I am not, I am a blue belt, so I have a long way to go, but, uh, but you're advancing, you're, you got a red belt in other subjects, so good for you. <laughs> no, not a red belt, not a red belt, maybe, maybe a brown in some other areas. The Gracie Diet, I am here with the founder of the UFC, Mixed Martial Arts, Horian Gracie, his father is also the founder of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a lot of you have seen on my social media and Snapchat that I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, and he was nice enough to come here uh, and talk. And we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff that's important. You know, how to discipline the mind. One of the most common questions I get is how to overcome procrastination, discipline yourself, build a daily routine that's productive. And then we're going to also talk about um, the Gracie diet, which is a very, you know, the Gracie family is in the Guinness Book World Records for the most professional athletes in one family. There's, I think, something like 50 to 70 professional athletes. And so this diet not only is, a, is you know, for health, but as part of a whole lifestyle. And so thank you for coming. My pleasure. Um, thank you I'm, very much I'm for the opportunity. very uh, honored that you're here. Maybe we could start for somebody watching the story of how Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu came about, how your father started, how you, this is a picture actually of you right here when he was uh, very oh, baby. one years old or two years old with a gi on practicing jiu-jitsu. Um, for those of you who don't know much about Brazilian jiu-jitsu, if you watch any UFC fighting now, any MMA fighting, they call it mixed martial arts because they do a combination of boxing and striking, but the foundation of mixed martial arts is really Brazilian jiu-jitsu because right. your family came to America, what was it, when was it, 94 you started the UFC? 93, actually. 93. Yeah. And nobody could beat the Gracie family. Everybody was doing karate. They were doing boxing. They were wrestling. I remember watching the first UFC one, two, three, and uh, you know, one skinny Gracie yeah. uh, family member came and just nobody could. How many did he win? Um, he won three UFCs, the first. Three. He won the first three against people. That was when there was no weight classes. That's right. No weight class. No time limits. No, no time limit. People were elbow it was vicious and he was about he's your how's he related to you Hoyce is my little brother that's your brother yes okay yes. so Hoyce is uh Ho Hoyce came in and he's probably 170 pounds something like that right 75 or something like that yeah. yeah he was the lightest guy on the event for sure yeah but was a very good example of what proper technique can do so he went in there and put on a nice show and uh, ultimately he changed the world yeah yeah, it's idea. changed the world. Now there's <clears throat> your family, your sons have schools. I mean, there's schools around the world. I train, I was just down in San Diego. 
I just trained now. I found a, a Gracie Jiu Jitsu Academy, trained there. Almost every country in the world has something. I was in it's, Norway, they're doing ju yeah. Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, it's all over the place. So, what's the story for someone who doesn't know? Uh, the back, take us back over 100 years ago. <laughs> okay, thank you again for the opportunity. It's great to no, be here. No, thank you. Um, a former Jiu Jitsu instructor came to Brazil about 100 years ago, okay. early 1900s, as an aide to the Japanese immigration colony. Was he from Japan? He was from Japan. Okay. And my grandfather, Gaston, was a very influential man in Brazil at the time. So he helped the Japanese gentleman get settled in northern Brazil. And to show his gratitude, the Japanese instructor offered to teach Jiu-Jitsu to my then 13-year-old Uncle Carlos, who was uh -huh. the oldest of eight kids, five of whom were boys. Uncle Carlos was kind of a wild kid, but as soon as he started learning Jiu-Jitsu, he found himself with that and fell in love with the art. Trained under the Japanese instructors for a few years, and when the family moved from northern Brazil to Rio, he then started teaching Jiu-Jitsu to his friends and of course sharing with his brothers. Right. My dad, Elio, was physically a very frail child. He was a small one in the he family, was, right? Yeah, because he was younger than the other ones. Also, he's 11 years younger than my uncle Carlos, but still had a very frail health. He would run up a flight of stairs and had fainting spells. Wow. And nobody knew exactly why. So the doctors at the time recommended he be kept away from any kind of physical activity. Wow. So my dad used just to watch his brothers practice jiu-jitsu. Nothing else to do, no television, just kind of spend the day watching his brothers. Until one day, when he was 16 years old, a student came for a class and my uncles were not around to teach the class. So my father offered to teach the men a lesson. And the guy agreed, okay kid, let's play. My father stepped on the mat and taught the men a lesson. Huh. When Uncle Carlos showed up, very apologetic, I'm sorry I'm late, let's have the class. The student said, listen, I had a class with your little brother, Elio, and I liked it. In fact, I want to be his student from now on. <laughs> my dad was promoted to be a teacher by his student. Wow. What the old man soon realized is that the techniques he had memorized required a certain amount of physical ability and strength and speed which he did not have. Okay. So to trial and error, he started modifying the traditional Japanese techniques that the brothers were practicing and giving more emphasis to natural body movements, simpler, shorter moves, better timing, better leverage, and so forth. And that modification is what gave birth to what's known today as Gracie Jiu-Jitsu or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yes. So my dad did not invent Jiu-Jitsu, he just made it easier for the little guy, like you'd like to explain it himself yeah. as. In order to test these changes in the martial arts, you can't just theorize about that. So he started issuing challenges to everybody in Brazil and uh, becoming very successful in the challenge match against different styles of so martial arts. So he would arts. just fight, he would put a, I heard he would put something in the newspaper, <laughs> anybody come fight me. Or Uncle, something like this. Uncle Carlos started with that. Yeah. You know, if you want to have a broken arm or a broken rib, call me. Carlos gives <laughs> such and such an address. You know that's <laughs> going to get men macho. Men are macho. They're going to show up and be like, who is this guy? <laughs> but ultimately, my dad started challenging everybody and defeating everybody and became the first sports icon in Brazil's history. Wow. Now, back in the 30s, Pelé, the soccer player, wasn't even born. Yeah. So there was nobody else in terms of sports that the Brazilian youth had to root for. And like I said, the old man became this iconic figure that's beyond anything else. And he's a, for people who know belt system, you see, him and his brother and the brothers are the only red belt 10th degree. Yes, that's many that's years. That's the highest. That's the highest. End. And you're a ninth degree. I'm a ninth degree, yes. Red belt, which is the highest you can get that because, because you're not Because I'm not the founder of the art. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes. Um, anyway, so my dad started challenging everybody, becoming this huge guy in Brazil, very popular. The family became very, you know, defeating everybody and stuff like that, very successful. And then uh, fought the longest fight in history, one round of three hours and 40 wow. minutes. Who was that against? Valdemar Santana, a former student of his at the academy. Oh, was it a Japanese? Or no, it was not a Japanese. A Brazilian, Brazilian guy, yeah. Wow. 25 years old. My dad was 43 years old at the time, and the fight was just crazy long. Anyway, three, so. Who won? Ultimately, the guy won the fight. But it took three hours. Three hours and 40 minutes. And my father basically lost to exhaustion eventually. He eventually was just so tired he couldn't take it anymore. But anyways, wow. um, there was a very impressive fight and for both of them and stuff like that. Um, so my dad, becoming this huge guy in Brazil, for me, it was growing up as if I was living with Superman. Right. You know, everybody knew the old man, like a movie star. Wherever he goes, very popular, that kind of stuff. And uh, it was great to be born up in a family like this. You just Everybody knows it's a very convenient stuff. When I was 16 years old, I decided to come to the United States. So I saved money for a year teaching my private class, which I started teaching very young. And in the Gracie family, you don't have much of a choice of how early you start doing jiu-jitsu. You're pretty much conceived <laughs> for you this. You started at one. <laughs> you know, yeah. a little you have a grandson that's how old? Or I have 10 grandchildren. 10 grandchildren. Yes. And they start when they they're just started. As soon one as they year, start, yeah. six there's, months. There's a diaper, and then there's a kimono. We'll hide in the diaper, you know? <laughs> Anyways, so um, 
I started saving money by teaching classes and stuff like that. And then at 17, I came to the United States to spend a month's vacation. Um, I found that right before I came, that if I was a member of the YMCA, I would have a $1 discount, which <laughs> for me at the time was a lot of money. So with saving my money and stuff like that, I stayed at the YMCA here in Hollywood. Oh, really? Yes. So you mean to sleep? To sleep. Oh, wow. Yeah, time, Not to had, go to the gym. No, 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 okay. no. No, to sleep. They were like a little hostel all the time. They could, yeah. People could come in and sleep. So I joined the YMCA in Brazil a month before I came so I could get the ID and become yeah, I'm a member. So I came here and stayed at my YMCA. And for security reasons, I didn't want to leave my cash and my return ticket in my room. Okay. So I gave it to the receptionist to put on the safe of the company, which he did. A week later, when I went to get some more cash, I find out that the receptionist had stolen my cash oh, and wow. my ticket. So I called the manager and he said, I'm very sorry. I'm going to give you a couple of bucks to buy a sandwich, but I'm not buying you a new ticket. Called the airline company, which I did. They told me that it's going to take them six months to make sure nobody used my ticket so they could give me a new one. Wow. So I did not want to leave my father, you know, worried about it. So I called my dad in Brazil and said, Dad, guess what? I love America. I'm going to be here for at least another six months. <laughs> so fate. I, I didn't tell fate. the old man that uh, fate would. indeed, yes. I didn't tell the old man that uh, had no money, no ticket, didn't speak English, didn't know anybody. He would have a heart attack. So I learned very, on, very early on in my life that How old all were you? 17. So you weren't even 18 and no. you were in a new country. That's right. No money. No money, no, no nothing. Yeah. Yes. I learned very early on in my life that all bad things happen for a good reason. Huh. No matter what, how you bad all, it is, 100%, okay. no doubt, no doubt. I'm a living example of that. But do you think you have to recognize that and turn it into good? Because sometimes <clears> people, <throat> something bad happens and they get so depressed they never learn from it. That's right. Yeah. That's the trick. If they can turn things around and say, wait, what's the good in it for me? It changed immediately. Yeah. Always, invariably. Or look at all different, uh, how do I say, crossroads in your life where something very, very bad happened. Ultimately, it's for the good. So it creates a new opportunity. That's where I see it has happened to me many times. Yeah. Anyways, but just a question of looking at things. You, once you can see, a person can see a glass half full, half empty, depends on the way you see the things. For me, it worked out well to understand and accept that mindset. Okay. So. I find myself eventually looking for work and find myself flipping hamburgers at a place called White Castle, doing oh, yeah. burgers. Yeah, yeah. And then um, <laughs> my trip that was going to be a month long trip stretched out to be a year long trip. That's 1970. Hmm. Find myself for a few days literally struggling, no money, panhandling on the street corners, asking for a spare change so I could eat, sleeping in a newspaper on the sidewalk. All that is part of growing up. And ultimately, after one year, got a ticket, went back to Brazil, everything worked out fine. But all I could think about is America. I was just good. I got hooked. I loved the idea of, you know, the land of opportunity and being able to support myself at 17, 18 years old for mm -hmm. a year. And that was fascinating, you know. Saw so Jimmy Henderson in concert a couple of times. It was really wow. Nice. Yes. And uh, so anyway, it was a great experience. Made some good friends. And then I spent two years, after I returned to Brazil, I spent two years saving money so I could come back to the States, which okay. I did in 72. Okay. Visit some friends for a few months and then went back to Brazil, went to law school in Brazil, oh. graduated law school, I'm an attorney. Oh, okay. I never practiced law, but yeah. I have a law degree. And then after finishing law school in 78, I decided it was time to come back to the United States and share the Jiu Jitsu that my family had perfected with the rest of the world. It was huh. my dream. So I came back, I first stayed with this friend of mine whose mother was an actress. So I would stay, you know, she would go to work in the studios and I would be home alone. Okay. But I can't be doing nothing, so I had to do something. So I'm washing the windows, I'm cleaning the bathrooms, I'm cooking dinner, cutting the grass, anything to show appreciation for her, letting me stay at her place. And uh, before you know it, I started looking for work, and she said, what do you want to do? I said, anything. Do you want to clean other people's homes? I said, of course. So I started calling her friends. She started calling her friends. Hey, my friend Hardy does a great cleaning work. Oh, send him over here, over here. So huh. I'm cleaning everybody's house, right? A whole bunch of ladies, everybody in the business. And uh, eventually, I landed on the house of a woman whose husband was the assistant director on the TV show Starsky and Hutch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, 35 years ago, she says, hey, you're not a bad looking guy. How come you're not in the movie business? I said, that's right. How come I'm not in the movie business? <laughs> she said, take some pictures and my husband will take you to a casting office and you start doing extra work. And I said, done. Oh, wow. Hung up my broom and I start doing extra work. Fantasy Island, Hill Street Blues, Heart to Heart, wow. Rockford Files, Quincy, you know, Love So Boat. from Brazil right to Hollywood. Right to Hollywood. So now I'm doing extra work in the movies, having fun with that. <clears throat> and at the same time, I left the ladies' house at the house with some friends of mine, put some mats in my garage, and every person I met I invited for a free class. Huh. So I'm working on the movies as an extra five days a week, 
in teaching class Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. As my schedule gets busy and I start working more here, I start cutting down the hours working the movies and teaching more classes. Right. So first class is on the house. I happen to be an amazing teacher. People are going to fall in love with the class for sure. Yeah. And then if you like it, you bring a friend, I got you another free class. If you bring yeah. 10 friends, I got you 10 free classes. Yeah. And that's how the word was spreading around. It was not uncommon. I started teaching class in my garage for 1979, early 80s. That somebody would say, hold on, my former Kung Fu instructor or karate or taekwondo or wrestling or boxing or judo does not believe in jiu-jitsu. He thinks that I'm wasting my time training with you. He wants to challenge, to a cha he wants to fight, challenge you to a fight. Would you accept that? I said, of course, bring him in. So the guy would bring the martial arts instructor to challenge me to a no hose bar fight in my garage on 3rd Street, Hermosa Beach. Hmm. And of course, I'll tell my students, say, Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, some Kung Fu guys So you have up. everybody watch. Everybody come in and watch. Some of those are on YouTube. Well, Maybe yours, is it your brother, Hickson? Is Hickson your brother? Yeah, Hickson is my brother, yeah. yes. Because I've seen some challenges. There's some challenges in the, the old Kung days. The Kung Fu guy always loses. Well, <laughs> Kung Fu is like other martial arts, they're all good. They're just yes. limited on their possibilities. Right. You know, it's not they're my not fault. They're not completely rounded That's out. That's right. It's yeah. not my fault. Somebody had to be number one. I just happened to be it. <laughs> <laughs> so the bottom line is this. So these guys from different styles of martial arts kept coming to the house and challenged me over and over and over, hundreds of times on a 10-year span. Wow, really? That many yes, times? Yes, hundreds of times. So I'll be, I'm bringing someone tonight. Did, Great. Did you win every time? Yes. Yeah. It's not me, it's what I know. The sport, I mean, the, not the sport, the skill. As the, we say in Brazil, in a blind man's land, he who has one eye is king. Right. You know what <laughs> I mean? Because the striking martial arts, karate, kung fu, boxing, taekwondo, they rely on punching, Yeah. right? And it's okay that you can punch someone. If the guy's bigger, heavy, and stronger, you can knock him out, great. But if you're fighting someone who's bigger, heavier, and stronger than you, and you rely on a punch, even if you punch him on the face and break his nose, yeah. that doesn't mean he's going to stop. Right. He cannot get a hold of you, throw you on the ground, and if you don't know how to deal with the grappling aspect of it, you're right. very limited. Yeah. And the realism that my father had adapted and uh, implemented on the jiu-jitsu techniques that we do is to deal with the person who is bigger, heavier, and stronger yeah. and wants to crush you on the ground also. Because that's so, usually the most dangerous situation. Of course. You get attacked by somebody, for women too. Of course. Yeah. That's the realistic situation. You don't yeah. want to fight a little five-year-old kid. Right. It's the kid's father they'll have you right. worried about. You know, the guy's big, strong, and wants to beat you up. So you have to know how to defend yourself from that. It's not even a question of beating them up. Yeah. But knowing enough that you won't get hurt. Yeah. That's the science. Yeah. Of jiu-jitsu especially. Anyways. So the guys would come and challenge and we had this humble a bunch of challenge matches and stuff like that. And like I said, after 10 years, it dawned on me that I could not be in a garage challenging one person at a time to show the world about that's not the way to go. Mm. You gotta, you know, and then we rented a little school in Torrance, you know, the Grace Academy. Is that the, the school first. that's still there? No. That's but it one. was still in Torrance. There's it was one. in Torrance yeah. also, yes. Okay, yeah. And people say, gosh, how come you stayed in Torrance, you know? Yeah. And I said, I have so many cop friends they were coming uh, to have class with me in the garage, you know, and I said, you know, these guys are my friends. Sometimes I, my lead foot, I go faster than I should in the stop sign. <laughs> and the guy said, hold on, go slow, I'll see you in class tonight. I said, I'm not getting out of this town. That's so funny. that's kind of why I stay around the neighborhood. Anyway, so um, after hundreds of challenge matches like that, it dawned on me that I couldn't be doing this with one-on-one -on, -one in a garage or even a small school in Torrance. That's the videos you're talking about, the ones you have on the Academy in Torrance, on the yes. first one, yes. some challenge matches. Yes. And uh, it's on the Gracie in Action DVDs we have. So what happens after those, it don't, I can't do this. So I came up with the concept of creating the UFC, where yeah. you can put showcase the world to the world, different styles of martial arts, fighting against one another. Yeah. In a, th a three-fight elimination, remember that, eight fighters, yeah. they fight each other, the losers get out, they keep fighting each other until we have a one guy defeating everybody that night. And that was when there's no weight classes. No weight classes, was, no time was limits. How no many points. years was that? That was the first, uh, Five UFCs. First five UFCs. The first five UFCs, yes. That's when I was involved in the UFC. Yeah. Those days. And uh, because for me, it was very important to allow different styles of martial arts to do anything and everything they wanted. You couldn't right. have rules. Yeah. You know? The idea of the octagon, for example, I've seen, I've been in enough fights that you can see if the guys are getting beat up. He wants to run away between the ropes in a yes. boxing ring. Yeah. But the idea of the cage is so the guy can't run away. Yeah. In fact, movie director John Milius, who was a student of mine at the time, John, I invited me to be the creative director, and John and I came up with the concept for the, uh, for the octagon. Huh. You know, we thought of a boat with alligators, you know, a, a, a <laughs> shark tank around, so that if the guy want to run away, you get chewed up by sharks and stuff. But ultimately, we settled for the octagon. It turned out to be a great idea. Yeah. It's still happening today. They Visually. still call it the octagon. Yes, yes. So it worked out great. So, with that said, of course, I think I mentioned to you, I, my, I was... How old were you? So this is in 1994 when you started? 93. Three, sorry, three. The first one, yeah. 
I have 47, 48, something okay. like that. Yes. So eventually the thing, of course, exploded. It caught yeah. on big time. It was a very successful uh, experience, that, you know, and it just turned out to be a great showcase yeah. opportunity for Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. And the message and the dream I had of making people realize the importance of knowing Jiu Jitsu was done. I mean, after the first event, the U.S. Army calls me up and said, Mr. Gracie, we saw the little guy beat the big guy. We need huh. to learn this and ask me to create a program for them, which I did, that for the last 25 years has been the official hand-to-hand -hand combatants program for the U.S. Army. Really? Now that you the, created? Yes. Wow. Now the FBI, the Secret Service, the DEA, Border Patrol, every major federal law enforcement agency in huh. the country, and a whole bunch of law, PDs as and well. And Secret Service. I mean, and uh, everybody, Special Forces. You everybody, said. yes. All of them train Jiu-Jitsu now. The whole thing is official. It's all over the place. Wow. Which is great. Yeah. Nice group of friends to have, you know? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Good, good group to have behind you. <laughs> That's right. So, once this stuff exploded, and I kind of, the dream is, is fulfilled, I'm like this. You know, now right. what? So, a few years ago, as you know, the boys came up, Hiro and Henry came up with the idea of Grace University. Yes. Which is now, which has is great. reached. It's an online school. It's an email. online school that you can learn Jiu Jitsu online. Yeah. It has reached, you know, ridiculous amount of people. The United Nations has 193 countries affiliated to it. Grace wow. University has 196 countries. <laughs> more than the United <laughs> Nations. <laughs> We're welcoming more countries than the United Nations, which is an amazing idea, a brilliant idea. The boys are very dedicated, pushing that button to the, making it happen and so forth. But for me, it's like Jiu Jitsu is it's on, a, on a fast track. Now what? Yeah. And one day, about five years ago, I had this epiphany. It's the health. It's the health part. It's of the it. health part. Of because it. one thing people should understand is that Jiu Jitsu, <clears throat> people who practice it, it's not just fighting. It's a whole way of thinking about life, a discipline. Yeah, Jiu Jitsu does impact your level of confidence. Right. And when you're confident, it changes a lot of the aspects of the prospect that you have in life. I mean, the whole thing changes. One thing is you walk around insecure. The other one is a businessman. If you're confident on your possibilities, you deal with that medium in a way that is very different. Yeah. So the confidence aspect of Jiu Jitsu is really impactful in one's life. Yeah. So there's that side to it. And of course, the exercise, the fitness, all that good stuff. But the diet is beyond that. Yeah. And so you wrote this book. I How long book. ago did you write this? Um, four and a half, five years ago. Five years ago, The yes. Gracie Diet. And I've okay. read this before, and you brought me another <laughs> copy. Yes. And the key thing, and one of the things for people, there are so many diets out there, the unique, one of the unique things about this diet is it's big on food combinations. Yes. Because a lot of diets say, don't <clears throat> eat bread, you know, if, if you're if you're ketogenic, and don't eat fruit or eat lots of fruit. Or the, and yours is much more about you can eat it, but not together. That's correct. Yeah. The concept of the idea of the Grace diet developed by my uncle Carlos. Mm -hmm. By the way, as soon as my dad and his brothers are getting involved in the early days in competing, fighting, pretty much running the academy, uncle Carlos was the first one to learn Jiu Jitsu in the Gracie family, took a step back, became the manager for the brothers and started studying how to keep everybody healthy. Right. They are not big, strong guys. They couldn't afford to have a headache before a fight. Yeah. Or a toothache, or a stomach ache, you know, say, or a heartburn. Yeah. If you're gonna fight, it's gonna impact your performance. He realized very early on, the, the close correlation between good health and good performance. Yeah. If you have to do a speech tomorrow, and you have right. one grain of rice in your shoe, it's gonna mess up your speech. Right. Because that little grain of rice becomes a distraction. Right. Let alone an ulcer, or a yeah. heartburn, or a headache. So you can't just wonder if that's going to happen or not. People are so accustomed to feel good one day and bad on the other. Good, they don't know the ingredients of your food. Okay. Therefore, if your body is alkaline, you feel great the whole time. There's no yeah. headaches, there's no stomach aches, nothing. Everything works perfect. By sometimes people just are guided by the pleasure of what they're eating. Yes. And pleasure becomes the determining factor why they eat this or that, because they like to eat. Yeah. Now remember, food is a very cultural thing. Great grandma taught grandma, grandma taught mom, mom taught us, and we're going to teach our kids what we like to eat. Bottom line is not everything you like is good for you. Yeah, the especially with modern food, they put so many things oh, that trick so your much, taste buds. Yes, 100%, yeah. absolutely right. So people like to smoke, but that doesn't mean it's good for them. Right. The people that like to use drugs, it's not good for them. So the fact that you like it doesn't mean it's, doesn't mean it's okay. Yeah. So the concept of the greasy diet is to learn to like what's good for you. Yeah. Fortunately, I was born in a family where my uncle Carlo, who was not a doctor, spent 65 years studying food combining. He literally used the family as guinea pigs. Mm. We had a very big house 
in, uh, in a place called Teresopolis, which is an hour from downtown Rio, with 21 bedrooms and 18 bathrooms. Wow. We counted one time 37 children, all relatives, staying there for a summer vacation. Huh. It's crazy stuff. But the bottom line is that, that fun, actually, it was a lot of fun, indeed. Uh, crazy times, yes. Wonderful times. So all the meals were prepared according to the Greek diet. So the kids would just eat what we had. This is it. There's lunch right here. They have no choice. So there's no, I don't want to eat this. There's no such a thing. It's just that's like a, a yeah. little army, you know, a very Spartan lifestyle. Training jiu-jitsu, eating right. That was a very unique And you saw people's health change as they started <clears throat> doing that. Well, with this we had no, we just grew up like this. Oh, you grew up, so you had there's no, no, yeah, there's no yeah. choice. This is it. How about the other kids that weren't that were just visiting for the summer for the first time? Did well, they notice a difference? Those 37 kids were all relatives, they're all family. Oh, okay, so they were But all, if every yeah. time we had people out, they would just fall into the groove and eat like we ate. Yeah. There was no choice of taking junk in the house. There's no Coca-Cola in the fridge ever. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no sodas and stuff like that. No, it didn't exist. Yeah. And everybody just ate right and learned to eat right, and that was the bottom line. So when I wrote this book, my idea was to share with people, because while I was teaching classes out of my garage, a lot of people came and said, Honey, tell me about what you're eating now. What kind of meal is that? You're preparing this and that. And I kept giving them some tips, but it was never enough. So I decided to write the book, explain to everybody how to follow into it, and then literally impact their lives in a positive way. Let me read some of the, there's a few, there's some, there's a lot to this. You go out and buy this book. They can get it on Amazon? Amazon, yes. So the Gracie diet in a, nutshell here for juicing apples melons pineapples carrots use a juicer oh this is all sorry let me this is the juicing is it's big on juicing you have fasting you fast well, once a month well i fast once a month food yeah. combinations is the main thing it's actually main here's thing. my breakfast that i was gonna eat <laughs> and then and i ate a little bit but then i felt guilty so we had bread was okay bread and the butter and the kale was i mean the eggs kale and, the kale, was and great. kale was great but i had this and you said I shouldn't have this at the same time. That is correct. So what's the ra what's the reason? The reason is this because these are the citric fruits. You know the, the strawberries yes. and the blueberries, right? Are acidic fruits. Okay. Acidic fruit should not be mixed with anything else. So you eat that alone. You eat uh, uh, strawberries. You have a bucket of just strawberries. Make that meal out of that. Okay. Same thing with the blueberries and blackberries. All acidic fruits. Can you have blueberries and strawberries no, together? No. No. So Only separate. one kind of acidic fruit per meal. That's it. Okay. Nothing else. Because what happens then if you eat them at the same time? It brings acidity to the system, yes. Okay. That's what you want to avoid. But how come if you just have one, it doesn't bring as much acidity? Because it's not mixed with anything else. Oh, uh, okay. We all need gasoline. Yes. We all need fire. Yes. Don't put them together. Yes. Boom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's important to have gasoline, important to have fire. So the vitamins of different fruits is great. To have a variety of fruits and vegetables and stuff is great. The trick is how to combine them right. This should not be called a diet. I should make a point of saying that, clarifying this, because it's not limiting. Right. Look at the list of yeah. The you can eat almost everything, anything, anything. So no pork is one thing. Not the only to have. thing we don't eat is pork. Pork. Yes. And Other some that, things you eat a little bit less, like you said, like <coughs> dairy. Have some cheese, but not a lot of milk and things like that's that. That's right. You don't yeah. need milk. The less milk you drink, the better. But if you like to drink milk, it's okay. Yes. You're not forbidden from eating drinking right. milk. It's just I don't drink milk. You don't need milk. Yeah. You know, the idea of, you know, a good looking lady in a bathing suit or a strong looking guy in a, in a bathing suit, a little milk mustache. Right. They want to sell milk. It's right. That's a commercial. Yeah, of yeah. course. You know, it's not stuff that you need. Then this is a, this is kind of a, mm. this is a quick overview of the groups of food, right? That's right. And so you have, we'll take some close ups of this. We have the vegetables right here. Vegetables group A. Green. So group A, you can combine all of these things with one of group B with one of group B, right which here. is here. Group B or it can be grouped with itself. Of course, all group A, a with combined a. with each other. So for example, in group A, you have vegetables and greens. green beans, kale, mushrooms. So you could have like a salad yes. with one meat or seafood, like chicken. Or two chicken. or three or four. Oh, okay, two or three. And you could ha also have fat and oily foods like yeah. avocado. Almonds, avocado, cashews, so all melted that. Melted cheese. All and you stuff. can combine it with one yeah. starch. With rice, not rice and beans. Or ah. with pasta, not pasta. So you could have yeah. rice, but not, you wouldn't have this with mm. bread and rice. Correct. Only one of them. Lentils. Now, group C. Those are the sweet fruits and cheeses, yes. So these can combine with a starch. As long as you don't have fat on the starch. Which one's fat? There. Butter, yeah, oil or butter here. If you don't so you could have just, say, lentil soup. If it's not and prepared with fat. If with no fat. If yeah, it's no yeah. oil, no, no butter, no nothing. Then you it can, could have, then you could have apple, an apple. Right. You can have watermelon juice, you can have uh, dates, you can have papaya, and you can have some crackers. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And now D is also acidic fruits, right? D are the acidic fruit group. What was C? Not C is the sweet fruit. Oh, sweet fruit. So yeah. you separate sweet from acidic. What about this green tea? What do you think? It's okay. The tea is neutral. Tea can be with everything. Neutral. Everything you want. Yeah. Just like water. Just like water. So you can have water with A, B, C. There's yes. E. There's A, B, C, D, E. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so then, then D is, is right your here, is the milk. So D things, <laughs> acidic fruits do not combine with each other. So this, so like for example, mango, you should Only just mango. eat a mango. Not a mango, a whole bunch of mangoes. I eat 15 yeah. mangoes in a meal. Really? Yes, but that's only mango. Grapefruit, yeah. same thing. Same thing. Just have some grapefruits. That's correct. Now group E is interesting. Is just bananas? No, that says the raw bananas combine with these foods ah. and do not combine with these. So foods. you're big on bananas. People should eat bananas. Yeah, it's a great You know thing. what's interesting? Yeah. When I track my diet and my fitness pal, Almost all, and I eat pretty healthy, potassium you don't get, and bananas give you that potassium. Yes. So does coconut water. Yes. Most people, if you track your diet, you don't get, and potassium is one of the major things you need. Yes. So you can have raw bananas with, with this group, cheese, yeah, with apple, this. but not with, with honey. Yes, or bread. And you're not big on sugar in general. Like, I eat so much sweet stuff already from the fruits that yeah. you don't need to put the sugar, you know? So get your dessert from some yes. fruit. Not dessert, there's no dessert. Okay, because there's no dessert because you wouldn't eat a meal and then have this. A fruit Just it. have it as a That's meal. That's right, have it as a meal. That's now, right. the other thing that you talk about in the book is that every, you should only eat, oh, actually, meal. let me do this. So group F is, is milk, what you can have with milk. And you, yes. So but don't have milk with, with fruit. Uh, avocado and fruits and stuff like that. That is correct. What about milk? So you can have milk with. You can have milk with cereal if you want. Milk Although we know that cereal, a lot of them are junk. Bad. But this is homemade granola. Bread should be made from whole flour and should not be consumed. Oh, you should wait, let it? 24 hours before. Usually when you buy bread somewhere, it's been there for 24 hours. Right, so, it's so okay. that's good. Avoid sweets, canned food, pepper, clover, cinnamon pickles, and don't eat pork. Correct. Now, the other big thing is you should eat every four and a half hours. Well, you should Three space meals. your meals at least four and a half hours. Not yeah. that you have to eat every four and a half hours, okay. but you have to have a space in between meals at least four and a half to Without five snacks hours. in between. No snacks, only water. Yeah. yeah, and then fasting, Which you were telling me about Nobel Prize winning uh, this year, a winner, 2016. 2016 yeah. won a Nobel Prize along this. What your what your father knew and uh, uncle knew a hundred years ago. Well, we've been saying that for a long time. The idea of of uh, autophagy, so he described the Japanese scientist, explained that when you fast, you literally help your body by not consuming it into clean house, it has to eat the, it So it also, eats old cells yes, and things like yes, this. Yes, it's a great cleansing process for you and helps you. So do you do that? Yes, once a month I do a fasting. Just 24, 24 hours. hours? No eat or drink anything. But just water? You're allowed I to? don't drink water. Really? Yeah, just take a day, you're gonna rest and just huh. chill. But for someone new, maybe they could just yeah, have drink water. water in the beginning. Yeah. Until they get it. But it's not that bad. You yeah. can do it without water. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Well, just rest in a day that you don't have to go to work or anything like that. Just kind yeah. of chill a little bit, get a book and and relax. Huh. Yeah. Now, for somebody watching, you you were telling me how sometimes it's too overwhelming to yes. go from the modern diet to switch to this. So you created a system with the belt ranking systems where you do it in levels till you're a black belt. Correct. Each one about two weeks. Yeah. So you start out with white mm. belt, yes. which is just drink water first in the morning. It's also big on sanitation. Wash your hands before eating. It's every important. Meal. Yeah? You have yeah. to wash your hands before you eat. It doesn't yeah. hurt. I mean, the amount of, of contamination and bacteria that you're going to avoid by just simply washing your hands is yeah. it's stagnant. So you should do that. No reason why not. I actually read, <coughs> there's an interesting book I read years ago on, they just did an experiment with the average person. And they said, not only when you wash your hands, but put soap under the nail, because yeah. it's the nails that carry most of the So, um, And then, OK. And then, so then get in the habit of writing down what you eat. On the first week only. Okay. You don't have to do it every week. Okay. So wash your hands. What's the idea? Why do you think, what, what's the benefit? Just people start to see how much crazy right. things they eat? That's right. So if you write everything down that you eat during a week, yeah. it helps you keep you accountable. Yes. It's like the person who has no, no idea how much money they're spending. If they write down every penny they spend, yes. on the end of the month, they're going to say, wow, I wasted so much money in this and this and that. Yeah. And the same thing with food. If you start writing down what you eat, yeah. you're going to realize that I'm eating more than I need and whatever. You can <coughs> use, if you like to use apps, there's a great <coughs> free app called My Fitness Pal that you can enter your food. That counts too, right? Just keeping track. Well, of course, yeah. keeping track of it, 100%. So then, then after a week or two, you go to Blue Belt, which you continue to do everything you did in the white belt, Correct. washing your hands, drink water, except you don't need you don't to write need to down. Write again. You don't write it. Then you start eliminating desserts. 
sweet or fruits after cooked meal? Yes, after cooked meal. It's not that you shouldn't eat So you fruit. can have fruits, yes. but just not after as dessert. As dessert. As their own four and a half hour later meal. Exactly. And then you can drink water, carbonated water, coconut water, veggie juice, iced tea, but no lemon or sugar. Right. Then after that, you do that for a few weeks. Then you go to purple belt, which is the third belt. You do everything that you were doing before, and now you start to do the combination. You implement the combination. But now yeah. you've already been a month of changing your habits. That's right. So it's not so hard. Not so hard at all. That's the idea. Gradually. And you eliminate pork. And you eliminate pork. The concept of combining foods is the most important of all. Because yes. I know a lot of people say, I only eat organic food. Eating organic is an important step that you are becoming aware of what you're eating. It's very smart. Right. But if you don't combine the foods properly, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. The reaction is still going to be acidic in your system, and that's going to bring unwanted results. Yeah. Now, the next, you go to brown belt, where you continue to do everything you've been learning, but now you start spacing the meal. At least four and a half, four and half hours. Yeah. And you only do this six days a week, and you get one day cheat day. That's right, six days a week. Yeah, so and you can take Saturdays for, I always do Saturday for my cheat day. And the reason I recommend you do that is that if you spend six days of the week eating right, spacing your meals, combining your foods properly, properly, and on the other day, on the seventh day, you mess up, you'll feel so sick that oh, you're going right. to say, wow, what the heck you was I thinking? You stop doing it. You stop doing it. Then it's when automatically you evolve to the black belt when you start eating every day correctly. So then when by the tune you do a black belt, then you start doing this seven days a week and teaching others. Oh, you feel so good. You just so this is this is mm. about two. It's interesting. It takes for those of you in my 67 steps. It takes about two and a half months to change old habits. Oh, Scientists yeah. have found. Is university, that right? Yeah, University of College oh, wow. London came up with a study. They used to say you can change habits in 30 days. You know, quit smoking, change your diet. But they said you need about 67 days. And this mm. is interesting. This black belt is right around 67 days. Interesting. So you kind of found out Wait, well, what you were know? ahead of the scientist. <laughs> now, question for you: What are? The, let's say somebody watching this buys the book, starts implementing the diet. What type of results have you <clears> seen? <throat> Weight loss, getting a six pack, feeling better, disease going. What have you seen? All of the above. Yeah. Yeah. Any stories you can think of that are just stand out to you of people? Yes, I have a student who's a gastroenterologist okay. down at Torrance Memorial, and uh, had a student, had a, pa a patient who was morbidly obese. Mm -hmm. She was doing an eight-month program to have the stomach reduction procedure right. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was uh, diabetic. She had high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Yeah. He gave her the Gracie Diet book. Six and a half months later, he was in his office, and the woman came to thank him and give him a hug, which he did not know who the person he was. Couldn't he, didn't, recognize he couldn't her. recognize her. Wow. She lost 52 kilograms, over 100 wow. pounds. She was no longer diabetic, no longer high blood pressure, no longer high cholesterol. She canceled the procedure. She didn't have the stomach reduction done. Wow. A happy 53-year-old woman. So wow. I was very happy to see that. And for me, it's no surprise. If you eat right, yeah. you'll be fine. You know yeah. what people should not do is forget that eating should not be something that you live for that. Eating is something to nourish your body to keep you going. Right. If you're driving your car on the freeway and a little red light start blinking on the panel, do you put a Band-Aid and keep driving or you pull over to a mechanic and say, what the heck is that? Right. Of course. So if you have a heartburn and you take a medicine or Zentac or whatever it is to stop the heartburn, don't think life is good. Right. This you're is a Band-Aid. You're just putting a Band-Aid over. Right. For somebody who's watching, you know, what about combining, let's say somebody wants to start doing jujitsu, can, do even professional athletes follow this type of diet? They it's, should. Yeah. The ones that are not should be doing it. But I'm it. saying in jujitsu, are there some people that practice this? Yes, yeah. yes, 100%. Of course. And your brothers. Yes, all of yeah. them do that. You know what I'm saying? All yeah. of the whole Gracie family has been doing this for and a Hick, long time. And Hicks and Gracie. Oh, of course. Hickson is one of the, did he ever lose a fight? No. I think he's like... Hickson is impossible to deal with, man. Yeah. That's too much. Did you spar with him, <laughs> Was he the hardest? When he was younger, you know, of course, I'll play with him. But then as we get older, you know, I'm the older brother, yeah. that kind of thing. It was easy on me. Who was the hardest person you ever... It's also... All those in the family. Really? Yeah. Those guys are just... Eventually, somebody's going to catch your foot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a part of the, the tradition. It's because there's always the change of the guard. That's the old man used to yeah. say that. When a little baby's born, so be nice to him. Because one, one day he's going to be able to beat you. <laughs> what about things like, uh, I saw a documentary on jiu-jitsu and it had Hicks and Gracie doing some yoga and breathing. Yes. Do you think that's the type that's of thing? That's wonderful, yeah. yeah. Very good stuff. Right? Yeah. And Hicks is really good. And stretching. Good. All and stretching, the... yeah. Uncle Carlos used to say that as long as you're flexible, you're young. 
Yeah. You know, so make sure that you stretch and keep, you know, exercising, that kind of stuff is very important. But more important than all that is eating right. Yeah. Because I don't care how much you exercise. Because yeah, so many people go to the gym all the time, they need but they never, my, so I'm going to tell you an interesting story. I never told you. <clears throat> my dad was one of the first professional bodybuilders in the world. <clears throat> um, and so when he was born, he had, I think it was rheumatic fever, something with his heart when he was a one years old. And so the doctors told my grandparents, this boy will probably live to 12 years old. He's probably gonna die. This is in, my dad was born in Harlem in New York. <laughs> and they were poor and they, they said, whatever you do, don't have him do hard exercise. Hmm. It'll hurt him. Well, my dad just sat inside till he was about 12, 13. And then he found an article on bodybuilding and he started to lift weights and his diet. My dad always had a great diet. No, my dad didn't have a sweet tooth at all, never ate sugar. And he went from this kid who was supposed to be dead at 12 or 13 to by the time he became Mr. Canada, Mr. Puerto Rico, he had the world record bench press. So mm. control, mm. so many times in life, we have things outside of our control. Who you're born to, where you're born, poverty, you know, abusive parents and things like that. And if you just focus on what you can control, a big one's diet. Of course. And it, I don't care if you you can diet, lifting weights, you can do if you're in prison. When you control everything within your control. I tell this for entrepreneurs in business. People say, how can they make more money? I say, well, are you optimizing what you actually can? Because some people go, if I could just get an investor to give me a million dollars, I'd be able to grow my business. But I say, if I came to your office right now, is it optimized with what's around you? Hmm. And vi we all, humans, we, I think, at least myself, there's a natural bad habit to look outside for the answer when you realize yes. it's simple stuff like diet. Of course. Which everybody knows, but nobody yeah, does. Exactly. What do you, for somebody mm. watching this that's worried about willpower, what are some things you've found? Mm. Because we live in a world, I go out, there's pizza, there, or you go to the movies, there's no good food, even if you want to eat healthy. How do you build the discipline? Is it by fasting once a month? Is it just <clears> long <throat> enough doing this? Do you have tricks? Do you bring your own food with you? I, a lot of times, my traveling has a lot to do with what I'm going to eat when I get there. Okay. So eating for me is, is, is a major aspect of any project that I do. What, okay. what am I going to eat? Okay. Worst comes to worst, I'll just fast. I won't really? eat anything. If it's bad stuff, I just don't eat. Huh. You know? I don't have to go to a movie and eat. I right. have dinner and then I go to a movie. Yeah. So in a full time, you don't have to be eating popcorn and soda. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, why should I have to eat? That's not. People yeah. are just culturally, they get used to certain things. And the trick is to re educate yourself and learn the good habits because they are as difficult to break as the bad habits. Right. So if you can get in a good habit, get in a good habit, you're yeah. in good shape. And that's the trick. Well, what about <clears throat> one thing that I've found who you're around matters too? Of course. So if you hang out with, with people, that go to a Jiu -Jitsu, Gracie Jiu Jitsu school, it's gonna be easier because they might be following the same diet. I've always found it hard to 100% rely on willpower if my environment is messed up. Yeah, the environment has a lot to do with that, yeah. but you sometimes you're the one that influence and change the environment as right. well. Depends on right. how convinced and, and how, uh, how much conviction you have in what you're doing. Yeah. There have been many times in environments that I say, you know what, this is the way it should be, and before you know it, there's a people following and learning and doing this. Yeah. I came here, started in the garage. Nobody knew anything about jujitsu. Yeah. Look at everybody about jujitsu now. Yeah. So I just was able to, you know, because of my convictions and my beliefs and the way I handled the thing, literally changed the world. Was there the any, world. back in that time, was there even any jujitsu people in America? There's some people that didn't jujitsu, but the Japanese jujitsu. Not Brazilian jujitsu. Not jiu Brazilian jujitsu, yeah. In fact, that's why I started. When did your other family start to come? Other Gracies? After the UFC, 20 years later. Oh, so in the mid 90s. Mid 90s, yeah. So you had already been here 20 years. Yeah. Huh. So you're a pioneer. Kind of, yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, this has been awesome. So I, I want to just kind of close by saying one thing that I found in life, whoever experiments the most wins. So this is might be something you haven't heard before. Experiment with it. Try to, you can follow this simple thing. It's two and a half months. Now, if they buy the book, this has all these inside. That all is this correct. information. This information is so if you buy this book, it's not, how expensive is it? It's $20. And uh, try it. 
just try it because so many people in the personality, there's something called the Hexaco personality score. You take a test, it tells you 25 things about yourself, hmm. okay? This is the newest scientific test. It came out in 2000. And one of the factors in your personality that predicts your success mm. is called mm. openness to ex new experience. So many people miss out on life because anything, like you said, that they haven't heard growing up, they'll be like, I don't want to try. Yes. And one way you make a heck of a lot more money, if you look at everybody who made money, a lot of money, billionaires, they did something, they experimented with something when other people thought it was crazy. Hmm. Bill Gates, you know, these people doing computers at 12. Elon Musk starting the car company, Tesla. Even some of Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett told him he shouldn't do it, but he saw something and was willing to experiment. So try something new. I mean, diet <clears throat> is, at the end of the day, if you don't have health, I know a guy that's got a billion dollars, but he's so overweight he can't even get out of bed. All the money in the world, the world you world. wouldn't want that. You'd want if that. you could, if you could have, some, if I could wire you one billion dollars now, but one condition, you'd be so fat and unhealthy that you couldn't get out of bed, and you'd have to lay in a hospital bed the rest of your life. Nobody would take that Nobody deal, take that even deal. for a billion dollars, because you can't okay. use the money if you can't move. I often tell my kids that I'd rather be on a crossroads, on a dirt road in China, in the middle of nowhere, a pair of shorts, shirtless, in the rain, at night, completely lost with good health right. than being in a castle with all the money in the world at my disposal with bad health. Yeah. With good health, you can take any position, any situation, you can handle anything. There's no stopping you. Yeah. That's what it is, that's the trick. One last thing I was gonna ask you, you said earlier that stuck with me. If somebody watching, <clears throat> yesterday I posted on my Snapchat, have you had something happen to you in life, something bad recently? And when I've, I do that about once a month, I post on my social media. And every time I'm surprised by the literal, I would say, I, it's hard to count, but 10,000 or more people write me in one day hmm. with sad stories. I mean, it's almost, I can't even look at them all. Uh, I, the last one I was looking at, you know, it's mom died, sister has cancer, little <laughs> son's dying, all these things. And you were saying earlier that in your experience with jiu-jitsu, the diet, and just your life, all there's, always, for a good, for there's a always something good. Yes. But how, in the midst of that, when it's so hard and so painful, how do you have the faith to believe that? I guess you said it all right there, having the faith to believe that. Yeah. That's what it is. I believe it, it's comforting to me to see it that way. So you don't think it's random and it's just, no. no. Yeah. Come on. I took many years ago. I took a, a balloon trip. Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you mean up? Up. Yeah. Up a balloon, and I drove two and a half hours to get to like Lake Perry or something like that, and it had to be there at six o'clock so that you can see the sunrise at six thirty on the balloon. So I drive two and a half hours, and I get there, and the balloon is filling up with helium, and I hop in a little basket, which is like pretty much a very small thing. There's a couple. There's me and a friend and the pilot, and you turn on the gas, and in three minutes you're at three thousand feet. Yeah. Very quiet over there. And as I'm looking up, I'm looking down from the balloon, very silent in the wind and stuff like that. I see the freeway is like a little line like this with thousands of cars going towards downtown. And I look like a little ant, you know? And I'm looking, gosh, with little, little ants on the car. I'm thinking, wow, each one of those little cars, which is like the size of an ant, has a person in it, which is smaller than that car. Mm -hmm. Each person has a head that's smaller than them. You can barely see it now at that point. And each head has a brain in it. And each of those people on those cars, thousands of people, has the worst worry, the biggest, uh, more stress than anybody else. Each one of them thinks they have the worst problems on their shoulder. Mm. Everybody thinks, oh my gosh, my life is here. Every single one of them. And I'm looking over there. They took me two and a half hours to drive to that location. The lake that I drove around is nothing but a little puddle of water. The mountain I drove around is just a little pile of dirt. And looking from over there, I said, gosh, each one of those are little tiny things so worried about everything. It made me realize that we don't have the right to worry about anything. We're too insignificant on the big, you know, the scheme of things that we don't have to worry about. Each person has, oh my gosh, I got to do this. Everybody has worries all the time. Don't worry about a thing. Just yeah. relax, let it cruise by, wait, do the right thing. Try not to cheat and do the, you know, the deceive people and whatever. Do what you, your heart tells you is the right thing to do, and things will just fall in place, 100%. Yeah.
<clears throat> I came back from the balloon trip a different person. Huh. Realizing that I could not worry about a thing in my life. Never worry about a thing. My son, the young son, told me one thing very interesting a few months ago that I kind of it really captured my way of looking at things. He said, when God pushes you off a cliff, he's either going to catch you on the way down or give you wings and teach you how to fly. Yeah. So, but what happens if you feel like it's your fault, like God didn't push you off, like you did something stupid? Well, learn from that. Yeah. If you learn from every stupid thing, I try to learn from the stupid things so I don't do them again and again. Yeah. But if you learn from every stupid thing you made, you, you did a mistake, you learn the lesson and move on. Yeah. That's what life is about. It's not a question of falling, as we know. It's a question of getting up and moving on again. Yeah. That's what the whole thing is about. Falling is okay. Are you going to get up and keep going or are you going to quit on that fall? Yeah. Yeah, and ultimately, that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's been a very interesting experience for me to believe that things happen for a reason. That alone is oh, so many experience opportunities that I've had to see that. And when the things all fail, everything else about to collapse, you just say, hey, I did what I could, did the best I could. Is it going to happen or not? And if it's meant to be, it's going to be. If you're not, I'll try again next time. When I was creating the academy, I mean, not going to the academy a few years ago, <clears throat> I had a... Uh, I brought a guy who do the stucco outside the building. Mm -hmm. Have you been to the academy, Torrance? You yes. Come, oh, yeah, yeah, I've been. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I had a, a big, huge open door because it was a, before it became the academy, it was a car parts storage location. Okay. So they had the big roll-up doors, the yeah. metal doors, and it was cinder block all around. It was a big cement square like this. And uh, the guy came in to do the stucco on a Thursday. He said, I'll be here Saturday to cover the whole place. What are you going to do for a door? I said, I'm going to put a glass door, which is what we have now. He said, if you're gonna put a glass door, you have to put a, a beam, a wood beam, oh, yeah. so that you can then screw the metal frame of the door and then put your glass in there. I had no idea we needed that. So I said, I'm gonna find a beam. That's on a Thursday. On Friday, I call, call, call. Nobody had the beam available because it's a three day process. Right. You have to order, it takes three days. The industrial side is 16 by four. It's not the little two by four that you buy at Home Depot. Right. <clears throat> so I had to call a lot of people. Nobody had it available. Finally, someone said, hey, I have one here. Somebody ordered a month and a half ago, they never picked it up. I said, it's mine, I'm on my way up. So I went there, picked up the beam. In order to secure the beam, you need a shoe, a metal shoe like this, that yeah. you screw to the wall, and then the beam sits on top of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Two. However, if you put, there's the cement frame, if you put the beam here, the shoe, both of them, there's no way you can put the, the, the I mean, if you put the shoes against the wall, you can't fit the beam in there. Oh, Do you okay. understand? Yeah, yeah. You need one shoe that you can screw this way, put the beam, and the other shoe you have to be able to screw from the outside because yes. it's going to come to hold it. Yeah. Do you follow me? Yep. But this reverse one didn't come with the beam. I had two that came with the beam that are like this. Okay. So you had two of the same. They had two yeah. of the same that wouldn't work. Yeah. So my friend said, Hardy, we need to get this reverse one. So we ran to Home Depot and we get there and I asked the lady, you have one this size, 16 by 4. She said, no, we don't carry this. I said, where do you carry the beam? She said, we don't have this kind. We'll go check out aisle eight, but that's, we don't have that. So I go to aisle eight, I start looking, and I find one beam like that. Huh. The big one. Yeah. Only one. I brought to the front, and she said, wow, you found one. I said, yeah, found one. And she runs this, the, the how do you get the barcode reader? Yeah, the reader. barcode scanner, yeah. Click, click. She said, it's not from here. Huh. Somebody left Somebody it. Somebody left it. Huh. Isn't that interesting? I can't yeah. even charge you. You can take it for free. So I took it home. Put it in there. The next morning, the guy was able to, to put the whole taco. Huh. The leftover one I had, I left it on the wall. I framed it. Huh. And I said, somebody must be training jujitsu in heaven. <laughs> Great. In other words, it was the last thing for me. Well, a week before the grand opening, everything is already happening. Right. So I didn't find that shoe. Now, go to any Home Depot in the country. You're not going to find one. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That when everything for me was just like, uh, the last thing I needed was a thing to support that stuff. A week before the grand opening, yeah, they don't carry it, but somebody left one in there for me. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like, hey, Sign. keep doing the right thing. Yeah. All right. So well, me being awesome. here, me being here is a special you blessing watching, as well. No, no, for me <laughs> and you watching this video, you know, I say whenever you see something like this, if you've watched this far, uh, you know, things happen for a reason. So. Check it out. It'll change your life forever. There's nothing like this. Leave a comment below if you've done the Gracie <laughs> diet or questions you have. And let me and tell you uh, something else. Yeah. I know it's a lot of people that watch your stuff. Yeah. This is how confident I am on the book. Yeah. Get the book. Try it for two weeks. Yeah. Follow the guidelines of the book for two weeks. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel better, yeah. I'll buy the book back from you. Yeah. Home Depot. Yeah. Nobody does. I'll give you the money back. 
Yeah. Send me the receipt, the book in good conditions, and I'll buy the book back. Yeah. Nobody gives you money back guarantee on your book. Only I do that. Do it for two weeks, 100%, and I'll let you know. I like that you have here, by the way, if you're at the Cheesecake Factory, what you what you yeah, should order. Most so most that's right. pretty practical. Cheesecake Factory, some things you shouldn't. So you think, so orange chicken is okay? Deep fried chicken breast in a sweet, so deep fry is tolerable. Here's the problem, sweet and spicy. So I'm going to give you the tips on how to order, how to order the food. Okay. What do you do on orange chicken? Because I love orange say? chicken. Yeah. So it says deep fried and sweet, served over white rice and garnished with vegetables. What is this? So you should pass on the wheat yeah. bread. Uh, so if you're going to eat rice, don't eat the bread. That's good because I've always been <clears throat> skipping the orange chicken. <laughs> I love orange <laughs> chicken. It's my weakness. That's awesome. Well, this is such a cool book. Tips for losing weight, which... You have managed carbs. If you if you eat right, losing weight is just a natural consequence yes. of that. You know, that's the trick. Yes. Like the headache. Why should people have a headache? Because you're thinking too much? Come on, your head was made to think. Yeah. You know? Take this is interesting. <clears throat> take a fifteen to thirty minute nap every day. I try to do it every single that's day. Important. That's important. Man, when I take a nap, it changes your life. I know. That's something. Even a short even five minute nap. If you can't don't have the time. That's right. And here you have some meal plans, meal plans that can yeah. actually be followed. That's so like right. breakfast, you have oatmeal, raisins, mm. apple juice. Lunch, you'll have a, looks like a salad here. Yeah. And then this olive is for lunch, oil. yes. So this is just a vegetarian right here. No, this is salad that should precede your entry. So oh. this is a meal right here. Lunch is this too. Oh, okay. So you have salad. Okay. <laughs> so you think three meals a day is enough. That's all you need. Now, what if somebody's watching and they're a bodybuilder? Okay. They're trying to, so just eat more? The question is, you can eat as much as you want. Yeah. Within reason, of course. Yeah. You don't want to feel sick after you eat so much. The question is this, do you want to get big or do you want to be healthy? Right. That's the plan. So some people you think are too big. I don't think anything. They have to decide for themselves. Right. It's not me telling how them they how, feel. To, how they feel. Yeah. Sometimes a guy's huge, yeah. but they feel sick all the time. Yeah. You know, or they're not that athletic. <laughs> Whatever. Dinner, I like this. Watermelon <coughs> juice, cottage cheese, rye bread, raisins, dates. So is this a, a meal. dinner? That's a meal. That's what that's I That's all. That's, that's a, a meal, song. another meal, another meal. Each one of them, you can have whatever you want. So not necessarily for, you don't have meat, it looks like, at night. At night, no. I usually have fruits for, bre for breakfast. Yep. And I have uh, cooked meal during the day because your metabolism yeah. is more active. It's easier to digest. Yeah. And at night, I usually have fruits or some veggie juice. Or, or some like cottage that. cheese. Something like that, yeah. Avocado. You sleep better if you have a lighter meal at night instead of having cooked food. Yeah. I love cottage cheese. Yeah, just try this so stuff. Is this oh, this is week two. Yes. Awesome. Do that for two weeks and there's no stopping you. And sun, you're big on Get enough sun. Come on, man. Born Brazil. In, born in Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> you have to go to the beach if you can. <laughs> man, if you've never been to Brazil, has some of the prettiest women in the world. Eggplant quiche. I'm getting hungry actually watching this. <laughs> has it been four and a half hours yet? <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you very this much. was awesome. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. All right.